In this exercise, you'll add conditional cut or fill subassemblies to an existing corridor assembly. You'll do this by specifying two levels of conditional cut or fill subassemblies. In the first level, if we look at our completed assembly here, you'll notice that we have three of these yellow conditional subassemblies. Here's one for fill, here's another one for fill, and here's one for a cut. And you'll see that all of these are attached to this little object right here, which is a guardrail. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out a little bit right here so we can see the whole corridor assembly. After we've completed the first level, we'll move on to the second level of conditional cut or fill subassemblies. And that has to do with these ditch subassemblies that are attached to our first level. So let's go ahead and add the three conditional subassemblies within the first level. Go ahead and zoom in to our area right here. Within the Home tab and under the Palettes panel, go ahead and select this button right here for Tool Palettes. After that, go ahead and right click on the Tool Palettes control bar and make sure you're on Civil Imperial Subassemblies. Go ahead and find the Conditional tab and then go ahead and select Conditional Cut or Fill. After that, we get some new information within our Properties panel. Go ahead and look under the parameters of the subassembly. And for side, we're going to leave it on the left. We have the choice for right right here, but we're going to leave it on left. For layout width, we're going to change it to 20 feet. For layout grade, we're going to change that to a four on one slope. Oops. For type, select fill. And then for the minimum distance, we're going to leave that at zero. And for a maximum distance, we're going to type five. Okay, we're finished with that. Go ahead and zoom into our little model right here. And you'll notice right next to our guardrail, we have this circle. Go ahead and select that marker. And you'll see if we zoom out, it places our subassembly 